This video talks about a small trick I use to program SPI chip on HT802 VoIP device. When I apply the 3.3 volt directly to the SPI chip, I cannot get the flash detected. This is at 2.16 volt, and I can detect it. So let's read the whole flash back. And with the, I don't know why, if I plug in the USB 2.0 uh, hub, uh, Ulink NT can read up to 951 kilobyte per second, which is faster than the USB JTAG NT. And without the hub, uh, it's some, a little bit slower. So the data is red. I will draw a diagram typically on the board. Let's say this is SPI chip and this is the CPU on the board. They have signals SISO clock and this is ground, ground, and VCC, VCC, and then our JPEG or Ulink NT, Ulink is talked to it. We want to program, we just want to program this chip. However, when we apply the power on it, it will give, not only give the, C, the SPI power, it will also give the CPU power as well. So once I issue a command, let's say we want to issue a command here, clock, and we want to get data out from it or into the SPI chip, the CPU is fighting with us. CPU also got the power and we to talk to each other. So the trick here now is we're trying to manipulate this power. Let's say we put this to a 2.16 volt. And this is what I found is it's like a sweet spot. When we have this power, this CPU seems to be in in idle state. It, it, it does not have enough juice to power on. However, it does give enough power to power this SPI chip so we can talk to each other. If I raise this to 3.3 .3 volt, CPU is going to be strong enough that during the muscling with the Ulink NT, Ulink loses, so we get all FFs, we cannot get any data, all FFs. But if we lower the uh, power to 2.16 volt, or maybe 2.2 volt, and this chip is properly operational, but this is not, and during that period of time, we can talk to the SPI chip and read back and program it.